Hi, my name is Marlon de Toy, professional wildlife photographer and safari guide. I just returned from a place that stands out as my favorite African safari experience and destination. Yes, if you've followed me for some time, you'll know exactly which place I'm talking about. It's Mana Pools. I had the privilege of hosting a great gentleman by the name of Adam Ansari on a privately guided photographic safari. We spent eight nights in Mana Pools, split between six nights with Stretch Ferreira safaris and two nights at Kanga Camp, operated by African bush camps. I did this with great purpose. I love what the sought after floodplain and forests have to offer. It's incredibly scenic and delivers magnificent photo opportunities. But I also love spending time further inland at Kanga Camp. The camp is built on a waterhole called Kanga Pan and it's the only water source around and draws in many different animals for a drink on a daily basis. This includes lions, wild dogs and even leopard. Our time on the floodplain was truly exciting. It was Adam's first visit to Mana Pools and he'd been wanting to see Mana for a long time and this week-long visit gave him a great taste of what this experience is all about. We enjoyed several close encounters with some of Mana's iconic elephant bulls. And these encounters might seem borderline crazy. I mean, why would you get so close to wild elephants? Well, the reality is that Mana is a little different. From the park's inception in 1963, visitors were allowed to walk the park freely on foot. Even today, any visitor can get out of their vehicle and move around freely, much like animals grow used to or habituated to the sight of a safari vehicle, Mana's resident wild animals have grown used to the sight of people out of their vehicles. It's not uncommon for them and they do not feel threatened by it. You can't do this in many other places in Africa as the sight of a human on two legs immediately presents a threat and then the fight or flight reaction kicks in. This is not always true of Mana. So when you see me or other guides and guests up close with elephants, buffaloes, wild dogs, and even lions, understand that it's been done this way for almost 60 years and the animals for the most part find very little issue with you on foot. What it does is it allows for a very unique safari experience where you get to see and photograph your favorite animals up close and personal. You can create unique compositions photographically here in Mana, and even the wide angle lenses are often used for beautiful frames on the big old jumbos, much like Adam got to experience firsthand. Although Mana has a great variety of wildlife, from lions, wild dogs, buffalo, zebra hippos, and more, none will capture your heart as much as the scenic beauty of this place. It makes every photograph extra special. Even the humble impala photographed within the mana forest will make for an amazing photograph. It's unlike any other place in Africa and it will steal a piece of your heart and leave you yearning to return. That I can promise you. After six nights with Stretch and Alistair on the floodplain, we ventured further inland for a two night stay with African bush camps at Kanga Camp. This place is wild. Imagine living on the only water source within a very large area where all animals need to come and drink and quench their thirst on a daily basis. You are right there in the thick of it, privy to every event that takes place in and around the waterhole itself. On our first afternoon, we decided to take a short drive around the outskirts of Kangapan. Within two minutes of leaving camp, we spotted two big male lions lying around in the open in the beautiful late afternoon sunlight. It was a fantastic photographic opportunity and Adam and I wasted little time. Our guide, Ranger Cloud, got us into a great spot and we were able to stay with the lions for about an hour or so. 
The angle we had on the cats was real nice and low. And this provided for the kind of eye level images we as wildlife photographers really love. We enjoyed some drinks on the deck at Kanga Camp that evening. And shortly before sitting down for dinner, heard frantic hyena calls coming from the back of the camp. Amidst the calls, we could hear the telltale chitter and chatter of excited wild dogs. There was no doubt that they had made a kill nearby and that the hyenas had tried to rob them of it. Not five minutes after we first heard them, a pack of 17 wild dogs arrived at the edge of the camp's waterhole for a drink. They were followed by at least seven hyenas. Just incredible. We could hardly believe our luck. They stayed for a little while before vanishing into the night. The following morning, we decided to spend some time at the waterhole. We had hoped that the dogs would come and drink again, or even had hoped that the two lions from the day before would show up at the pan. Just as we sat down for breakfast at around 7 a.m., a lone impala raced past the opposite side of the waterhole. I immediately, I instinctively knew the dogs were hunting and that they were in the area. I got Adam up and within minutes we were on the game viewer and in search of the pack. We found them about 10 minutes later, already full bellied and on the move. Now, wild dogs can finish a meal in a very short amount of time and 17 wild dogs would power their way through an adult impala in under 10 minutes. It's unreal. We never got to see them feeding and soon they vanished from sight and sadly we didn't see them again for the rest of the stay. We spent the rest of the day at the edge of the waterhole. So many animals and birds come and go daily. It's very special to be an observer at a remote waterhole in Africa just watching the ebb and flow of life here. Or many other places can that give you this same perspective. Some of the best moments are when the elephants spend time around the main lodge. And they come real close and from time to time venture around right next to the camp's wooden decking. Even stealing a drink from the camp pool itself. It's wonderful. It's unforgettable. What an experience. That evening, a leopardess came down to the water for a drink. She was pretty close to where we sat on the deck and gave us a stunning view of her. The following morning, I awoke to the sounds of mating leopards. How exciting is that? At around 4 a.m. I got to see them under spotlight and their rasping calls carried on until sunrise. Where they go during the daylight hours, I have no idea, but I've only ever seen them here at night or during the early morning hours before sunup. They are so elusive and experts at hiding. Incredible experience nonetheless. Our mana pools will always leave you wanting more. You could spend a week, you could spend a month, but by the end of your stay, you'll wish you had just one more day. It's one of my favorite places for very good reason. It's a home away from home. Thank you for watching this with me. A short visual diary of what Adam and I experienced on this private photographic safari. If you yourself have been, no doubt you'll be wanting to return. If you've not yet gotten around to visit Mana Pools, you have to put this at the top of your wish list. I hope this video helped a little bit with that decision. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, goodbye.